The internet is filled with millions of tiny communities scattered across the entire world, most of which you'll probably never encounter. Loose Wire is a idiot. He doesn't break the rules, but he's dumb. Today, I want to explore six dead games with smaller communities that have either slowly died off or barely ever got going. Urban Terror is one of the most iconic FPS games from the early 2000s, and was a childhood favourite to many, including a lot of people who actually suggested this game to me. Nowadays, Urban Terror is much smaller than it ever used to be, and although a lot of the lobbies told me they were full, most of the games I joined were filled with bots. 17 people in this one. Monkey's Playground. So this map's called G underscore Gravity. Oh. Oh. Okay, so everyone with a color next to their name is real. Everyone, everyone else is a bot. The first game, I was doing okay, then realized only four of us actually had a pin connection, and I actually had the least kills out of all the humans in the lobby. But I was slowly getting to grips with the game, and since I'm the world's best Nova 1 in CSGO, a lot of the things like crosshair placement transferred over pretty nicely. The second server I joined was called sexyurban.net. The map was UT underscore Arabian District, and it said there were 11 out of 64 people online. Here we go. Okay, this is actually a full lobby of people. I see why people play this. This shit is like satisfying as f The bots in this game definitely aren't great. But almost all of the players here were regulars, or at least knew what they were doing, and in the next map I'd start to see people jumping around, gliding and shitting on me, like Foon had never left. What? Oh my god! Did I just see Foon? I think Alf is like the f foon of urban terror. It was here that I began to learn a bit about urban terror and its movement. UT obviously has the basic walk and run features of any FPS, but with the sprint button, you can do things like this. It's a given that Urban Terror obviously has the basic walk and run features of any FPS, but eventually I discovered that it actually has a separate sprint button. I spent an hour or so watching tutorials on jumping while also trying to complete some of the jump maps that fill the Urban Terror server list. Welcome to Boob Jumps. How the f do you make that jump? Ah, a little wall jump. Now my turn. I think it's safe to say I struggled a little bit, but eventually I began to actually get the hang of it. Obviously, performing this stuff in an actual game is a completely different story, and it's definitely harder than it looks and sometimes not actually that effective. Holy f Okay, cut that shit out. <laughs> that shit is so cool. Oh my god. GG's. But at least to me, it now made sense how that one fella was just bouncing across my screen and jumping through our entire spawn in seconds. All over YouTube, you can find the craziest movement montages on Urban Terror from years and years ago. And even the competitive scene for UT is still alive, with pickup games being hosted pretty much every single day on a website that I'll link below. I personally never played Urban Terror when it was in its golden days, but a lot of the people that did either long moved on or are waiting for Urban Terror 5. 
The version I played today was 4.3.4, and version 5 is still in heavy development, with the latest update on their YouTube being over two years ago, and the community don't seem to think it'll be coming anytime soon. But that aside, there were a lot of quality urban terror maps that I didn't get to play, so I'll leave a link to a pretty iconic UT video from 2010 that showcases a lot of the older maps, as well as some of the craziest jumps that I probably couldn't do myself. The NPCs could do with a little bit of work. Hey! He's just killed me. Tribes Ascend is a first-person shooter released in 2012 as a free-to-play game by hi res Studios. After hours of getting the game to work, largely because I'm just pretty slow, I managed to get the community servers working, which was where the only game was actually taking place. Alright, finally, this has taken hours to get to this point. Before I realised that I needed mods to join the server, there were about 10 people online, but by the time I had everything figured out, there were only 4 people in the server. Pretty much straight away after I chose my random loadout, our flag was stolen by Marky Boy. It took me a while to get used to the movement, which is one of the biggest parts of any tribes game. For a while, it seemed every time I'd chase someone, they'd get away pretty quickly, and whenever I was running, they'd catch up within seconds. And that's because everyone was sliding using the spacebar, which I had no idea existed until about 7 minutes in, when I finally read the tooltip on the right side of my screen. Oh, you can ski. Okay, uh, I, I see how you kill people in this game. I, I get it, I just, I can't do it. Pretty much everyone in this lobby had their turn at killing me, and after a grand total of one kills, the first game came to a close. After this, I obviously re in the same lobby, but for some reason, everyone else had left the lobby and went to a different server. To start, it was Manbear67 and I versus Sieg Maru, but as the game went on, more and more people slowly filtered into the server. By the time Manbear reached 15 kills and Sieg Maru had 11, and three other people had joined and all gotten kills, I was still stuck on one. Playing against a bunch of people who have actually played this game before, and probably for a while, is torture. But, but in the third game, something changed. Trying to get some sympathy in the chat real quick, maybe a little compliment or something. <laughs> man bear gonna make me tear up a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, man. That is, that is actually the most wholesome thing I've ever heard. Clearly, Man Bear's words did something to me because I went from playing like Ornapixel to Prime Man Bear 67. And for a large part of the third game, I had the most kills on the entire server. Oh, he said great shot. 10 kills? Like, I'm pulling my weight in a lobby with people who probably play this game a decent amount. I ended game 3 with about 3 man bear compliments, 10 kills, and we won the game. There's a lot of tribes that I literally couldn't go into today because I'd be here all day. Like the copy game that tried recreating tribes and then went tits up, or the reasons why hi res have f***ed over the game and its community so hard for no reason at all. And of course, all the iconic tribes videos across the years, like this one. This video is of Space Jam 3, and is probably one of the most iconic tribes ascend matches of all time and took place in 2012. I really favor Reddit in these. They have really strong flag sense, really strong team sense. No, 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 David, it does go down there. I think they're turning from hardball. No, everybody's on the field. Like, it'll strike coming in. Oh, orbital strike. strike. We gotta get it. There's a return. We gotta go in. Equalizer cap here. We are gonna see an overtime. They got 20 seconds. <laughs> Whoa! This was a competitive tribes match between two teams. A group of players from Reddit who were considered the hand-picked group with practice fought against a random group of 4chaners, one with 300 ping and somehow lost. Over 10 years later in 2024, another tribes game called Tribes 3 Rivals is set to release and a lot of the tribes fans are very excited for that. I'll leave a link to the Tribes Discord below, as well as the Reddit tutorial that helped me actually getting the game working, in case you want to try it out for yourself. Now they've got our flag, and the guy with their flag is chasing their flag with our flag. 
How low is he? I could have genuinely tickled the hair on his big toe. And he would have died. He died from full damage. War games are everywhere, and a certain company called M2H have developed three of them. All three look very similar, and might actually just be reskins, but Isonzo is the most expensive, and also the best looking one. The battles inside Isonzo are set in the mountains of northern Italy, and each one is made up of about 250 people. Ah, up there. There we go. Oh, that's 200 bots and around 50 humans. I loaded into my first game on the map of Sabotino alongside 40 other fellas. A couple months ago, this lobby would have been empty, but recently Asonzo went free for about three days, followed by a 65% sale. So the player count spiked around three weeks ago and has slowly been falling the past few days. Apart from a few people, 90% of us were new to the game, and after dying to an airstrike, I left to join a different server, now on a map called Piav. Right, I think my best shout is to get a couple long rangers. Yeah, like what this guy's thinking. Right up there. There we go, I see him. Hey, why are you killing me? Chill. Oh, that's why. On my team was Stomatopod, Seblaz, and Cybersex. Oh, he's back. Cybersex. I definitely felt more comfortable here, and actually did okay, even if we did eventually lose the game. Wait, from right there? Fuck. Ah, oh, we just got shit on. How did I do? 37 kills, 24 deaths. After that, I just went around the different maps trying to speak to somebody, but nobody ever replied. And about an hour later, the game was starting to die off for the night, so I headed off. Oh my god. Okay, yep, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll do. Asonzo is definitely a great game, and although the AI isn't the best, a couple of the reviews, like this one, actually praise the bots, because it lets anyone have a go at getting kills, and doesn't turn the game into another sweat fest. But above anything in Asonzo, my favourite part is the maps, and nothing else in the whole game or any other war game really comes close. <laughs> This is Pirates, Vikings, and Knights 2. The game is over 13 years old with a very small community, and when I logged on to what I thought was a lobby of eight people, there was no one else. I said there were seven people in the lobby, but it's only me. I then joined the other server, which said it also had eight people, and there ended up being one other guy. Me and this because underscore I fella just 1v1 for a good 20 minutes, and I'm guessing he was also new because more often than not, I somehow won. <laughs> Come on. Now let me go heal up real quick. There we go. There we go. A little power up. I'm so f good at this game. Around the map, you can find turkeys that'll heal you and chest plates that'll regenerate your armor, and obviously your chests. That's for other people to steal, and I think also how you win the game. I didn't know much about the chest stealing, but when another guy joined our lobby, he obviously did, because he started stealing both our chests while we were pretty clueless just fighting each other in the middle. That was a very fair fight. Eventually, enough people joined for me to have a teammate, and even though I was being shit on by basically everyone in the lobby, my team, the Knights, somehow won. I then rejoined a different server afterwards, which had a few more players, and a couple players with over a thousand hours on the game. Okay, how have I not hit him? I'll piss off. Hey, hey. Boy, let's give you a haircut. <laughs> the fuck was that? Oh. Oh, they're waiting for me. That's cute. 
I was very surprised how little people talk about this game, especially considering how many people dedicated so many years of their life and hours of their day to it. And even now, some still come back every so often to play it. It's one of the best Half-Life 2 mods in existence, and the combat mechanics are by far the biggest part in that. It's definitely a shame this game doesn't even have half the player base it deserves anymore, but it's had a pretty long lifespan of over 13 years, which is a lot longer than average. Easy Red 2 was released in 2020 with the goal of being one of those hyper-realistic war sims but without the graphics. And for a lot of games like the Darkest Hour mod and Project Reality, that's worked pretty well, but Easy Red 2 is a little different. Jesus, there's only one server with six players. Jesus fucking Christ! After joining the biggest server with a total of six players, I spawned in the desert alongside a lot of AI that wouldn't exactly win an award for being the smartest. Here we go. Here we go. Come here, buddy. All right, who killed him? Oh my. The other people in chat were guessing each other's hours and they were saying numbers well into the triple digits, which proves this game definitely has an audience. Ah, they give up. That's unfortunate. Keep shooting, boys. I feel like Ryan Destroy You is uh is pretty good at this game. Oh, there's someone in my tank. Let's fuck him up. And if you ignore the bots and focus on the gunplay and the earthquake levels of screen shake, the game's actually pretty immersive, but it does have a couple issues. Getting flipped in your car and being under the map is one thing, but on the second location, half the fucking village was floating in midair. Is that a hole in the road? Oh, it's just a transparent road. <laughs> Why are half the houses just floating? Halfway through the second match, a guy named Ashuri joined as well, which made it him and I versus two other fellas. Oh, see, that's the only other guy in the game. I'm sorry. We did have a few problems, like the team kill incident, but I thought we did decent, and after about 30 minutes, we won the game. Here we f***ing go. Don't mind if I do. Here we go. I just got about four f kills. Holy shit. Tell you what, the game might be pretty ugly, but the trees are incredible. Pretty much straight away after that, I oh f 4 and I honestly don't think I'd play this game again. But when you look at all the other realistic war sims, it's a baby in comparison, and I think it could be an incredible game in a few years to come. TK's in the cab, exchanging fire, black world stall for them, that's their desire, welcome to DH, seatbelts not provided but required. <laughs> The Darkest Hour launched as a mod for Red Orchestra 1 in 2009, and has been in development since roughly 2007. Over the past couple months, I've had a lot of requests for me to give this game a go, especially because of its smaller community. I got on the game pretty late at night, but there was still a server with over 30 people online. Oh, there's one lobby. 32? That's actually a lot of people. Hey. Whoa. Obviously, given this game is set in a certain time period, I joined a certain team, and there's a couple things that might be blurred out just to avoid YouTube shitting itself. I started the whole thing off though, stuck in a car, and never really figured out how to exit it, but eventually the game did that for me. How the f*** do I get out of this truck? Uh oh. Otherwise, we, we got a bit of an issue here. Come on, someone. I then spawned somewhere else, which was when I finally got stuck in an actual fight. I, I think, I think I've just killed one. Oh, I can enter.
Good thing I got out of that shit. Holy f oh, I'm the only one alive. That's good. Yep, we're both dying. We're both dying. No, nope. apart from when my team fell back or I died, I didn't really move much. And after a couple kills, I switched teams and found a spot in the forest at the bottom of a little ditch. It was in this little ditch that I managed to get about 50% of my kills. Come on, peek back. There we go, thank you. I gotta be careful. There's one. Hey, he's dead, he's dead. He's gonna go right there. Dead. He's crossing. Dead. Oh, he thinks he can cross the road. Okay. Out of all the milsims I've played though, over the past couple months, this one is probably up there with the best. And as a bonus, I actually got to speak to the developer. After I messaged with a couple guys in my Discord about the game, one of the developers of the mod, Wolfkraut, hit me up and told me a bunch of shit about the game. Their aim with the Darkest Hour mod was to essentially make a combination of Red Orchestra, Project Reality, and Squad but some of the Red Orchestra features limit them in what they can do. He also told me about one of the older community members by the name of Rafterman or Revenant. Loose Wire is a f idiot. He doesn't break the rules, but he's f dumb. I spent at least two hours last night going down the Rafterman rabbit hole and I've come to the conclusion this guy is a f legend. The most viewed video of him on YouTube is literally him walking up to some random fella and team killing him, only for him to stare at the dead body with zero regrets and walk away unfazed. This guy alone has over 13,000 hours on the mod, and he's definitely not alone. There's a lot of people that show a shit ton of dedication to this mod, and it's definitely deserved. The Darkest Hour is a mod I want to return to in the future to take part in a huge game, hopefully with some of you, so if you're interested in that, maybe join my Discord and whenever we run an event, you'll definitely be pinged. As always, if there's ever a game or mod you want to see me feature in this series, DM any suggestions to my Twitter, or you can join my Discord and head over to the Suggestions channel. Thank you guys so much for the support. Honestly, it's been f mental recently, so I, I very much appreciate it. And, uh, oh yeah, remember... Subscribe.